Pleased with the resolution of the House of 15 November 2022, I now call the Emeritus Speaker, the member for South Coast, to present her valedictory speech. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I'm not emeritus, though, yet, unless you're doing something that I don't know about. Are you? I've just done it. And thank you. And uh, look, thank you, everybody, for coming today, in particular members of the Labor Party. And I know I gave you a really hard time for a long time, but it's really nice that you came. <laughs> and um, and you, if you're looking for an apology, whether I'm sorry, no, I'm not sorry. For the times I asked you to go one after the other, God, I had a good time doing that. <laughs> but I, do, I actually do want to. Um, I just do want to give a couple of apologies to the member for Kira. Is not here, of course. The member for Rockdale and the member for Cessnock, because they spent more time out of the chamber than in the chamber when I was speaker, and I do apologise for that. But they did. Uh, they did take it in good humour, and I love them for that. They're good guys. Um, I didn't really. Uh, I didn't really want to do this today. I just wanted to go. Um, yeah, I know. I didn't want to make a fuss. I didn't tell my family. I didn't invite any more conference um, members. I just wanted to go quietly. But, you know, I've had people say, you have to write a valedictory speech. You've got to do it. Um, and so I have, and I will, um, to the best of my ability without quiet crying. And I think um, I didn't want to tell my family because I think the only reason they would have turned up was to actually make sure I was leaving. <laughs> Because after 40 years of local government service and service in this place for 20 years, I don't think they ever believed I would actually go. But here I am, and I'm on my way. Um, and uh, it's been a fantastic ride. It's been a wild, wild, crazy ride. As eight years in opposition, uh, eight years as speaker, um, and then as minister, I've just had such a varied role in this place, and I'm so blessed to have done that. Um, and I've enjoyed every single minute of it, um, except for the appalling behaviour of some of those opposite. Um, that wasn't so easy. <laughs> that wasn't easy. But I look forward to leaving this place fairly quietly, and I haven't been a quiet person in my past, but I look forward to leaving quietly, going home to my beautiful South Coast home and enjoying my grandchildren, um, doing a bit of gardening, um, maybe playing bingo or things that old people do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it's funny, um, it's funny when we talk about our children, and I'll, I will mention them, even though I didn't tell them about this today, uh, because none of my children have taken any interest in politics whatsoever, smart unsurprisingly. Kids. Smart kids, one's a veterinarian, one's a lawyer, one's a police officer. They just went in different directions, and I'm so happy that they did. I'm so happy because um, they're way cleverer than I ever was, and uh, they've gone ahead in life with their challenges, of course, all of them. Um, but they've done very well and given me nine beautiful grandchildren, so I will enjoy them immensely. Um, uh, the, my husband, of course, has been a great partner to me over the last, well, 43 years of marriage, I think it is. 43? 45? I can't remember. 43? <laughs> but as the member for South Coast, he used to come to me regularly with me regularly to functions. I'm sure he's disappointed every Monday morning when I pack my bags and leave to come to Sydney and don't get back to Friday, and then we go out to you know whatever the function is. Uh, but uh, he was loved probably more than I was as, you know, as, as, as the, uh, when we went to functions. If I went to a function without him, they would say, well, where's Ozzy? Is he here? Is he here? I said, well, I'm here. <laughs> but they loved him, and I thank him for all of those times that perhaps he would have preferred to be somewhere else, but he wasn't. And he went, and he's been a great, great uh, husband in, in that respect anyway. He's not a great cook or anything else. <laughs> um, so, um, but, but what we have done in the South Coast, and I see my, uh, hopefully, the following uh, Liberal member for South Coast, Luke Sakura, in the gallery, we made fantastic friends with our veteran community. The veteran community in the South Coast are just beautiful people. And they've taught us, me, so much. In particular, um, you know, I don't want to leave anybody out, in particular the Korean War veterans. The Korean War veterans actually made the first appointment to see me when I became the member for South Coast, um, talking about the lack of recognition of Korean War veterans uh, post-armistice. And they were some of the best people we met. Um, we've ever met. Um, sadly, now some of them deceased, but Bob and Mavis Morris, Rod and Janet Copeland, uh, they taught this old history teacher a bit about the Korean War that I'd never learned in school, in university, and never taught either at school, at high school. So these people have enriched our lives. 
and this is what our veterans do. And I'm so proud to have made so many good friends in the veteran community, and Luke knows that. <laughs> Um, but my family have always supported me, of course. I speak about them not disparagingly, but they've also always supported me. Um, even after a strange U-turn of careers, after 27 years as an English history teacher, I wasn't a member of the Liberal Party, never, ever intended to come to this place, didn't even know where it was, or what it was, or who was the Premier, I wasn't interested. I just enjoyed my teaching career. Loved it, just loved it. Um, and until somebody said, in 2002, somebody said to me, would you like to join the Liberal Party and run for the seat of South Coast, which was a Labor seat, obviously, then. And I went, right, thought about it, Le rest is history, did it. But I didn't know anything about SECs or FECs or Liberal Party rules or some of the shady characters that lurk around the corridors of the Liberal Party. Oh, you're looking for a That kind of, Sorry, not <laughs> and, and I didn't understand any of that. And to be honest, I still don't understand any of that. And I don't know the rules or regulations. I, I don't know about, much about the SECs or FECs. I know they're important, but quite frankly, I know I knew then as I know now that what was important was to look after the people of the South Coast. That's all that mattered. And still. So. I'm going to mention quite a few people today, and there are so many people I could mention but can't mention because there's not enough time. There's so many people I need to, to call out and say you've been just wonderful people. But for all of you, if you don't get a mention, whether you're Labor, you're Liberal, you're Green, you're Shooters and Fishers, you're Independents, you're whatever you are, I, I, I just think so much of all of you because of the passion you bring to this place and the sacrifices you make. And I just, I love you all for that, <laughs> all of you. Even though we disagree and some of you have got crazy, crazy bloody ideas, really. <laughs> I just respect you all. Was that a point of order against that word? No, no. So please accept my apologies if I don't mention you. But here are some of the people that I guess, um, some of my champions in this place. As for the first champion group and the most, uh, the most important group of people in this place to me, is IT. <laughs> can anybody relate to that? Can you relate to that? Yes. <laughs> IT. Why? Because I know nothing about IT. And for some period of time, I had a speaker staff and I had ministerial staff doing things for me. I would say, Jane, and there she is, Jane. Jane, I can't turn on the computer. Which button is it? Jane, Jane. I, I just didn't know and then I had to do it myself. Oh, my God. Those people in IT are so patient. You get on the phone, yes, Mrs Hancock. Look, yes, you, you just go to this icon. No, slow down, speak in a language I can understand. And, you know you know what they're like if you've ever dealt with IT. They're so patient with people of my age and my generation um, and my lack of knowledge. They could be really impatient, but they're not. So IT, you're all champions in this place. And I think I speak for everybody, even the technological giants like Felicity who know what they're doing and I've asked her. But you know, for somebody who doesn't even know how to download an app or get an app, I think I did that the first time the other day, or what a podcast is. All these things that I've discovered because I've had to do it myself. But, you know, I'm a different generation. I'm Brad's generation. We, we, didn't, have, we didn't have calculators at school or anything like that. I taught at school with blackboards and chalk, for goodness sake. So did I. <laughs> so thank you, IT, and of course the champion of champion of IT is Victor Dominello. There he is. My love. <laughs> uh, we've been mates for a long time and good friends. But, you know, without Service New South Wales, you know, a lot of our communities would still be in the dark ages. And I thank Victor, who is the champion of champions of IT, and everything you've done, digitally, whatever that means. <laughs> but I know you've done a lot of that I, And I congratulate you because you are just a giant. We used to sit up there at the back bench and didn't we have some great conversations about you know who? Yes. <laughs> You're not scared of me. No, no. Um, now I go to the clerk and the staff of the parliament. I've had, I've, well, I've had three clerks. That's bad wording, I know. Um, I've worked with three clerks. The first was Russell Grove. Um, and of course, that was my early days of being a speaker. And he was quite a bit quizzical about me. He didn't quite know how to take me. And so he'd come into my office before question time. He'd just sit there with his head on the side and then to this side. Are you all right? I'd say, yeah, fine. And 
He just sat and comforted me. If there was any questions he had, I had, he would answer them. Then there was Rhonda Miller, mad, crazy, <laughs> a wonderful person. First female clerk, first female clerk, and uh, um, I was proud to be part of the appointment process. Um, but she was a wonderful person, and again, thoroughly loyal. And by that stage, I was getting to the, the time when I didn't always accept the clerk's advice. Not always, mostly, but not always. <clears throat> and then along came Helen. Well, you all know what Helen's like. Gentle, uh, intelligent, knowledgeable, everything you expect a clerk to be and want a clerk to be, but more than that, just a, a wonderful, beautiful human being. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, dear idea. <laughs> to everybody else, uh, uh, Carly sitting there, you've come here. How long have you been here, Carly, now? Oh. <laughs> Let Carly. that be recorded in Hansard. <laughs> yes, take that out of Hansard. You've been, you haven't, you, I hope you're here for a lot longer because of the service that you provide to members as well, Carly. They know what you're like and, of course, all of the clerks at the table but everyone in, in this house. And I say this from, from the perspective of the long time of being a speaker, I know what makes this place tick and who makes this place tick, and it's none of us, sorry. <laughs> it's everybody at the front of house, it's the, the, it, the caterers. Thank God for catering, I love catering. Um, the cleaners, the drivers, I got to have drivers when I was speaker, speaker and minister, uh, to Tony, to Ranveer, to Gary. They like family, as you said yesterday, um, Brad. They really are like family. My grandchildren used to come and run up to greet them. Hello, Tony. Hello, Ranveer, when we left or, or came back on a Friday afternoon. They're such good people, our drivers, and we're blessed to have them when we're privileged enough to have them. So thank you to them. Um, to also Peter and Ian, of course. Oh, there's Mark Webb. We never did get to have lunch. I'll come back and we'll have lunch. We did. Oh, God. OK. Uh, to Peter and Ian um, and, and all of the people who work in this place, thank you so much for everything you do for the members who are here in this place at the moment. Here are some strange individuals. Have I spoken too long? Yes, I knew it. Some strange individuals. I'm going to wander over here. And where's my name up there? There it is. Speaker's row. See the one next to it? Thomas George. <laughs> Thomas George. And you don't remember Thomas George being acting speaker, do you? Yes, we yeah. yeah. <laughs> He was, of course, he was kind. Probably, he was kind. Um, and the reason his name is up there, he was acting for me for some time when tragedy hit my family, and I had to take some time off. And and just generally speaking, Thomas George would come in again after a particularly torrid question time when Daly was giving me heaps or Kira or somebody, and he'd just pop, pop in the door and go. You all right? And I'd say, sure, I'm fine. OK, just checking. And sometimes I wasn't all right, but I wasn't going to tell him. But he checked on me every day. And he's a special person, and his name needs to be up there. It's so appropriate that it's up there in Speaker's Row. They'll probably take mine down. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, Greg Warren, where's he? I just wanted to mention him as Shadow Local Government Minister because he worked with me so well and so closely in local government matters, um, so respectfully, and I wanted to wish him luck in the future because I think working on legislation closely together, if you've got a shadow who can work with you, and, and we did work well, um, I'm really I'm really happy that it was Greg Warren that I had to work with rather than, say, member for Rockdale or someone. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you, Greg, wherever you are, for working collaboratively with me. Um, an absolute pair of champions. What do you call a pair of champions? It's like a murder of crows or whatever it is. This pair of champions over here. Yeah. Uh, this absolute pair of champions who inspired me and have inspired me as long as they've been here, which is not that long, five minutes really, but they're extraordinary. Both have showed courage and passion when introducing legislation perhaps too controversial for either major party to do. You led us to, to be able to have conscience votes, which allowed us to discard our party loyalties uh, and vote yet. for what we thought was right. What? what did you, you haven't said who they are yet. You just... I said no, you're you should listen. <laughs> for, for the record, um, Alex, members, members for Lake Macquarie and, and, and Sydney. Oh, what did I say? No. 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 But you're always... no, I said no. no. I? But you're always right, Shelley. I'm wrong. I know. I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, can, I, can I just say, um, your advocacy for the most marginalised in our communities has been something to behold. And it's not just for the most marginalised in my community or yours, but for the entire state. You've done so much and you've been brave and courageous. 
I love you both, and I'm sure we'll dine again some Monday night. We might, invi we might invite you again. Oh, oh, um, but I've enjoyed your company over such a long time. You're great, brave souls. Brave souls, I love you both. Oh, and I won't miss you. Um, and here's a strange one. This lady over here, Janelle Saffin, the member for Lismore. What a champion. What a champion. And I heard, and I, I listened to her story about, during the floods in Lismore, about getting swimming out of her home to save her own life, to save your life, you brave lady. And then every single day appearing before the media with the government members, and they've worked hard. You, you would recognise that. But you have been just such a courageous and brave and beautiful lady, and I just respect you. See this random group of people I'm choosing? You're one of them, Janelle. You are one of them. Um, Steph Cook, who's not here. Steph Cook, of course, emerged um, as the Minister for Emergency Services. And wow, what an absolute, what an absolute treasure she is. She puts her heart and soul into everything she does. She bleeds emergency. She feels it. She just is beautiful. She's left today to go to probably, I don't know, Yugara or Forbes or wherever those floods are affecting people yeah, so, so badly. Steph Cook's a champion. Um, we're lucky to have her as minister. She's been unbelievable. She's not here. And Jamie Parker, he is here. He gets a mention too because he's still my teacher's pet. You were, you were teacher's pet when you were a member sitting up there. And, and you know why? I mean, I, it's very hard for me to say it because he is a green, but he's still a teacher's pet because he was so respectful. He, if he interjected, it was without malice. It was without malice, it was without aggression, which doesn't mean to say he wasn't assertive on behalf of the causes he stood up for. But you're a lovely guy, and they're gonna miss you, the Greens. Uh, you, people like you don't come along very often. I love you too. <laughs> well, here is a member, better get back to my side before they kill me and walk out. <laughs> Here's a model member of parliament, this guy. This is what everybody should aspire to be, passionate, happy all of the time, hard-working, relentless, knocking on my door when I was a minister to do this, that and the other thing for the Central Coast. Oh, there he is. It, it doesn't get much better than this guy. just doesn't. Um, er, he throws everything into his role as a local member. You're going to name him? It, what would you say? You're going to have to tell us who he is. Did, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's She's always right you say oh, this guy knows. Coast. <laughs> He's the, actually the member for Central Coast. <laughs> member for Terrigal, uh, you're, you're a one-off. A one-off and very special. And I think there's nobody in this place that doesn't love you. Doesn't love you. Well done. Good luck in the election. We'll meet again, I'm sure. Um, okay. Here are some others of my friends and, and champions of this place. Melinda Pavey, just bloody talented individual, just a bloody talented woman who will be missed. Uh, much love, much love. What a loss, what a loss. <laughs> um, oh God, who are we gonna go to? Now I'll start crying. And of course, I have to mention Gladys Berejiklian, and even though it's been a while ago, she was one of my closest and dearest friends. We came in, in the same year. Um, and I still miss her to this day. My electorate misses her. They still cry when they talk to me in the street about her. Oh, how's Gladys? Isn't it terrible? They did what they did to her. They don't really know who they is, they, but it's terrible what they did to her. They're not quite sure. Um, but yes, I miss her. Um, I was broken hearted about what happened to her, but anyway. And also uh, John Brogdon, to John Brogdon. Uh, I wouldn't be here without John Brogdon. He had to give me the tick off to say, yeah, she's all right. Well, uh, she'll do, uh, as, as the candidate for South Coast. So um, I still think a great deal of John Brogdon. He was uh, immense talent, charismatic, beautiful person. And I'll always think highly of him and love him too, till the day I die. Um, some of the big and bold characters that some of you may not remember. Remember Richard Avery? Just so sit over there and make me cry with laughter in, when I was in the speaker's chair. Funny guy, he didn't. He was worse than I was with technology. He still used a typewriter and a little policeman's notebook. But he was one of the very rare people that had absolute natural wit and good humour. Witty, funny guy. Not many of those people exist. He was one of them, wasn't he? Member for Fairfield, you remember him. Richard Amory, champion. Andrew Tink was also one of those guys that made us laugh out loud. Um, and I've got to mention Anthony Roberts. He wouldn't be here, would he? Nah. 
Of course not. But that's one of the big, bold characters of this place. That I, that's, that's why I love this place. Big, bold, funny, with the bloody box he used to bring in. Um, and what he said <laughs> this afternoon just makes you laugh. Um, and we disagree in many areas, in many ways, but I think he's a great, big, bold character. One of those characters that I'll never forget in this place. So well done, Anthony. And I dare I say the next one, but John Barillaro. They, these are the big characters, right? John Barillaro. Um, what can I say? He was a big character, uh, small in stature, but um, he never backed down. Well, no, I'm just being factual. But he never, ever backed down to anybody. He never backed down to everybody. anybody. He stood up for what he believed in. Oh, sorry, there was an exception of who he backed down to, and that was Gladys Berejiklian, of course. <laughs> And of course, there was Noreen Hay, who also used to interject from over there. She'd say, lazy, 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 and direct it towards us, of course. But she's a good friend of mine, a great person. And those interjections, no, those interjections were also without malice. They were without malice. They were funny and noisy, but they were the, I guess, first four years of my speakership when people tended to be more kind to each other. And I guess that's one of my... <laughs> My parting message is, please, God, be kind to each other. Because nobody else is going to be, because most people hate us as, a, <laughs> as an occupation. So we've got to be kind to each other. Don't, don't be nasty. Um, and, and I'm going to mention Adam Marshall, because Adam Marshall is extremely intelligent, extremely intelligent young man, uh, and he's the champion of cracking speeches, I think. He gives fantastic, brilliant speeches. Um, well done, Adam. Uh, well, hit it to some really close friends, I guess, and the, the close friend that tops the list has got to be Melanie Gibbons. Um, talented, young, gentle young woman who's never, ever torn anybody down, publicly or privately. To me, she's never critical of anybody. She's just a gem. Um, Dom, I think you should do everything you can to keep her in this place, everything you can, because it would be such a loss to lose a woman of her integrity and loyalty. A beautiful friend. Don't cry. <laughs> Felicity Wilson. No, gonna, how much longer have I got? Felicity Wilson. Oh, God, Felicity. You have as long as you need. God, Felicity. Talkative, loquacious, garrulous. Did I say talkative? Talkative. I mean, there's so many, so many times that I've just said, Felicity, just shut up. <laughs> just shut up. You don't have to be so difficult. You don't have to be so argumentative. You don't have to know everything or pretend to know everything. Um, uh, but I have to say, uh, even though she's annoyed me in the past, I love her, I love her to bits, um, she is immensely talented, immensely talented. If you listen to some of the speeches she's delivered in this place, you will be more than impressed, trust me. And now that this is the hope and the future of the Liberal Party and the Liberal National Coalition in New South Wales, it's Felicity Wilson. God love you. Where's Eleni? Oh my God, here's another one. Feisty, problematic, <laughs> argumentative, pisses off the men, intimidates the men, um, and uh, I just love her for who she is. And I said to her yesterday, for goodness sake, Eleni, if people ask you to change, you might soften around the edges a little bit, but don't change. Don't change who you are. Do never change who you are. I, I'm still an idiot. I just still am who I am, and you need to do that. God love you, girl. All right, so I'm going I'm to yeah, move quickly on because I've taken too much time. What's the time? Everybody want to go to the bar. Right. Um, to my friends, of course, Gareth Ward and Andrew Constance have had their own challenges. They're still my friends. And um, I hope that all good things come to them in the future too. It's tough for them. Uh, to my electorate of South Coast, which is without doubt the most beautiful in the state. I've said that many times in here uh, with its pristine beaches, beautiful villages and towns. Uh, you all know that because you all want to live there or travel there on your holidays. It is a beautiful place. You know that, Jahad Dib, don't you? Because you lived there for a while with beautiful national parks and forests and beaches and bays and rivers, everything that you could ask for, with no high rise like the Central Coast. Uh, high rise to people in the, in the South Coast is two storeys. We don't like two storeys. That's high rise. So um, that's what the South Coast is. We don't want it to change too much. We don't like too much attention. We, we just want to do our own thing and be who we are and stay the same, basically speaking, as we've always been. 
Um, we're a wonderful electorate, a wonderful electorate, but we've been faced by bushfires and tragedies uh, before the 2019-2020 bushfires. Absolute tragedies. And that was the worst of all. I lost two of our, my closest friends in those bushfires. They lost their lives. Uh, we lost everything on our property in Lake Conjola, Conjola Park. We didn't live there, but we had everything else was there. Um, and it was very tough, very tough. And then we had floods which devastated our dairy farmers and our communities. But we're so resilient, as, as most of our communities are. We're resilient and we're brave and we'll come back, um, even now when we're suffering. Um, not the floods that Janelle's your electorate suffered, but in, in difficult times during very high rainfall. Um, but yes, we have a resilient community, we have a great community, we have a, a, we have a, a diverse community in many ways, um, and I know that in terms of diversity or acceptance of diversity, I always knew that during the marriage equality debate, my electorate of South Coast and the wider electorate of Gilmore would be right up there in the statistics on marriage equality, and yes, they were. They were the highest, I think, in regional New South Wales or regional Australia in favour of marriage equality. So, yay, I predicted that would happen. The federal member didn't, but I did. And um, I'm proud of that, my community, because that, their attitude would be, hey, whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy. That's a, that's a beach a community, I think, a coastal community. We all want to be happy and we want to let everybody else be happy and not stand in the way of anybody else's happiness. So, thank you. Um, to, to all of my, uh, of course, my volunteers, um, my friend uh, Jan Gregory, who's in the chamber, she's only here for Women's Council, otherwise she probably wouldn't be here to see me. Um, <laughs> all my staff who've worked in uh, ministerial offices, uh, Luke Sakora, who's there, I know he's going to win, um, who's been beside me for so many, um, so many of the issues in the South Coast, whether it's the Bay and Basin Belize Police Station or uh, Princess Highway or Barul Lake Bridge, at Turmeal Creek Bridge, it goes on and on. He's been there, he knows all about them. Um, uh, to all the volunteers, obviously, who fought during the floods and the bushfires, the RFS, the SES, Marine Rescue, Surf Life Saving, I've had something to do with all of them for a long, long period of time. Um, uh, to all of, obviously to um, the, all the volunteers um, in the SEC and my branch members and people who aren't branch members uh, who obviously helped me for five elections, to win five elections, to stand out in the rain and heat and work for me um, voluntarily, I just, I'm immensely, and I, I will do a different kind of thank you to them. To my staff in the EO, Lynn, Adam and Caitlin, thank you for working well, so well with the uh, South Coast community. Um, for, for 20 years, Lynn and Adam. Uh, speaker's office, Lou, uh, Luke, Jane, Bryce, Mark, Troy, Sean, Bridget, Gladys, Joe, um, and Michelle, and I took most of them when I went to the ministerial office, I took them. Um, and I think you wanted some of them, Mr Speaker, didn't you? But you weren't about to get them because they are a class act. They're a class act. Um, and anybody who's ever dealt with people like Luke or Jane or Troy or any of the rest of them know that they're special people. They care about every member that walks in the door, or walked in the door or walked in the door upstairs. They treated them with respect and love because that's how I trained them. You treat a Labor Party person the same way as a Greens person, the same whether they're crazy or not, you treat them well. There's Bryce, Bryce, Clayton, Damien. There they are. They're still here. They're still survived. And so thank you to all of you. I know I'm running out of time. Um, uh, oh, Tracy, of course, Tracy Hodgkinson, I must uh, mention, and Michelle, I did mention, but thank you to all of those. Uh, you've all changed my life, and I hope that I've changed yours. I hope I've changed yours. And I'm going to have a, a, far, a last thing to say is about Dom Perrottet. Who knew that I would say this about him? But he is smart, seriously clever, intelligent, and I'm not making this up, I don't need to because I'm going. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to suck up. But he, I have just learned when I've listened to him and observed him, he is courageous, he is intelligent and clever, and he doesn't, nobody else is gonna come close in this state um, in the near future to matching his, his skills. And I say that with all sincerity. Um, I just will do everything I can at least to retain the seat of South Coast and help you retain government because we deserve to be in government. We are a good government. We have been a good government and uh, 
And as long as we keep the South Coast in, liber in Liberal hands where it should be, well, that's, that'll be my contribution. All the best to you, Dom. And I know that you're going to be great. You're a, he's a star. He's a star. Um, and I'm just going to... Uh, I know everybody's quoted poetry. I know you're waiting for me to finish, but I know everybody's um, quoted poetry. I think it was... Uh, Churchill? No. Churchill. Yeah. Roberts, yeah. you were... You quoted some poetry. Robert, Robert Frost. No, Robert. you were Robert Frost. I don't know what you were. I can't remember. But everybody does that. And uh, I'm not going to do that because the old English teacher in me didn't quite be able... I couldn't find anything quite appropriate except for the lyrics of a lady called Vera Lynn. Anybody heard of Vera Lynn? I can't, I'm not, don't start singing. <laughs> but I'm doing it not just for all of you, but for my mother, because this was um, a song played at my mother's funeral. And uh, because she loved Vera Lynn, she was a woman born in Carlisle in England. And during the war met my father, who was on leave in Carlisle in the RAAF. And they met, and six weeks later they were married. And they were married till the day that my dad died, and I loved him, and I loved her. And her... This is what I say to all of you. I'm not singing it. Don't join in. We'll meet again. I don't know where and don't know when. But I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Bye.